Hi guys, we're live. It's Monday, January 22nd, and I'm Marina Blackford. Welcome to the channel. I'm so happy. Every time I do the lives, I feel like I'm coming home to something. I'm coming home to you guys. So um, I'm doing an afternoon live today. I'm going to ask you a favor. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when the lives are. I post a schedule the first week of the month for the channel. And on that schedule, you'll see two lives and I want you to put them in your calendar, make a note and come join this community because this channel has evolved and it's been really special to share all with you. And so the lives are here as a safe place to talk about our cancer journey, where we're at, questions that hopefully I can answer. And if I can't answer, other viewers hop on and usually have some input. So thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'd love to see the first comment so I can highlight that. And um, yeah, just thank you for being, for joining me today, this afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Um, all right. So look at me decorating my fancy studio. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. So good to see you, Lisa. Enjoy these lives and all your videos. You are an inspiration. Thank you, Lisa. I have loved connecting with you and anybody that subscribes and I'm able to respond to your message. I do my best, you know, so whether it's comments here or finding me um, on Instagram, but the lives are really great. We can real time kind of chat. I will also mention I have a website, which is my name, www.marinablackford.com. And I am currently spending more time on that, but through my website, you can book a coaching session or shoot me an email and I will see that. So I'm available for cancer coaching. Last year, I needed some information to help myself and continue to help others. So I became a certified holistic cancer coach and that gave me more knowledge and empowerment that we can create a body that is able to help us heal and battle off cancer cells. So Helen, welcome. Hey, hi. I love seeing returning names. So thank you guys. Um, there'll probably be more changes for the channel this year. I don't know exactly, so I won't announce that. So I guess my biggest announcement is reminding you guys that I have a website and if you need to get in touch with me there, please do. I am here for you. Um, what's my journey? Oh, I, anyways, I started to say, <laughs> did you guys see my studio today? Besides a bunch of mixed tile photos of my husband and I on our trips, one of my favorite things, besides the Boston Marathon medal and certificate that I ran one year after having breast cancer the first time, I have a balloon. Can you guess? It's my birthday tomorrow. It's been um, such a great week so far. My work family decorated for me last week. I am a dental hygienist. And so, they just, you know, decorated and did something special. Um, I had friends and family over yesterday. So that was awesome. My love language is quality time. So sign me up to hang out with people. Um, and today I went hiking with my husband. So it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful birthday so far. I'll highlight some comments here. Debbie Rosales. Hi, Marina. So happy to have caught this live right on time. Thank you for this wonderful information. Thank you, Debbie. For finding the channel, I was starting to say, uh, well, excuse me, silence that, my hubby. Um, <laughs> I was starting to say, um, if you're here, you probably found my channel because you were searching for some help for yourself or a loved one on their cancer journey. And maybe you looked up chemo. I think that's probably the most popular topic that's on my channel. And you came across me. You said, whoa, there's a video with a bunch of views, 12 things I wish I knew before starting chemo. And I am so happy I did that video because I somewhat view myself as a chemo expert. I've had breast cancer twice, triple negative, and have done a lot of chemo in regards to that. So I share all the tips here to help people on their journey. So make sure you check out my playlists and subscribe. Um, but I have a chemo playlist, a radiation playlist, surgery playlist, all of that. Jasmine, hello. Hi. Well, hello from per Purdue Bay, Alaska. Negative 32 today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If there was ever a time for the freezing face emoji, it would be now. Yay. Happy 40, Jasmine. You paid attention. I have this hat. 
I almost put it on for the live. And then I was like, ooh, should I, shouldn't I? But a friend got it for me and it says 40 AF. And we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, I am so, I'm so happy to be 40. It's a decade birthday. Um, thank you, Helen. And uh, I've just never been happier to be here. Like ever. Hey guys, are you guys looking for an upside to having cancer? You might actually start to enjoy, celebrate, acknowledge turning another year older because like you're just happy to be alive. So there's that. <laughs> I had a friend yesterday and she's like, make a speech while people are here. And I was like, I just, I never thought I'd make it to 40, but that wasn't, that wasn't my speech. <laughs> my speech was thank you for being here. Um, Helen, I've been in the hospital. I'm so sorry, Helen. Um, Helen has had a tough, has had a tough journey, stage four, and um has a sense of humor. And I'm just thankful to see you comment. So yes, Lisa sending you some love. All right, guys, let's chat. It's um it's January. What have you been up to? You setting goals? I don't really set New Year's resolutions anymore. I don't even like the word. I think I'm always using the word goal. Like, is there a new goal I have for this year? I like that better. I know that sounds funny. You know, that Marina, that's a resolution. Um, but no, I think, you know, as another year rolls around after the holidays and we get a chance to refocus, yeah, it's good to set goals. So, um, I achieved my goal last year of becoming a certified cancer coach. So I literally finished that the last week of the year. That was my timeline. And, um, so that was that goal. And this year is to continue diving in to the needs of the cancer patient, I guess I'll say. Yeah. And that being said, I don't want to, um, I don't want to pigeon my hole so that I get burnt out being here on YouTube, um, to just those on the cancer journey. But I think my point of being a two-time cancer survivor is to show hope and inspiration, but to really anybody going through something hard. So yeah, I hope that that is something that I continue to, to do. Um, I have a couple opportunities, which are really exciting. Um, one, I'm just auditioning locally for, uh, an event where survivors get to tell their story and that is awesome. So I'm trying something new. So that's my point. Really? What's, what's, what's on your list that you could say is new for you this year. If anybody wants to comment, please do. But just giving you some food for thought. When I was diagnosed the first time, what got me through was this crazy thing that happened in that um, I had just qualified for the Boston Marathon. And it was like, it's so hard to do. You have to run very fast for very far. And I did not qualify two times before. So this third time's the charm. I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing this thing. And I would achieve this very hard goal in the next week have to go get a biopsy and, um, and have that be positive for triple negative breast cancer and be told you should start chemo very soon because triple negative can move fast, you know, just a whirlwind. And if I didn't have that goal, that thing to look forward to, my cancer journey would have been much harder. And so I know it's crazy to ask some of you, if you're on your cancer journey, like, what's your goal? Your goal could be like, I just don't want to, you know, feel nauseous today. Like your goals are going to be entirely different than somebody that's not on a cancer journey. But I do challenge you to do something for yourself. We should all be living as if we have no time and that we have all the time. And I know that sounds totally wild, but hear me out, right? I, there's something I do too. So besides Boston, that was my goal that I was able to focus on and get through cancer. Um, I try to visit one new place a year. It's very big for me. It's very important to me. I just love to see places. So before kids, it was a lot of cities that I explored. Um, and even after kids, I'm very thankful to have helpful family. My husband and I have been able to take trips. So that is um, these two pictures behind me. This is my husband and I, Curtis, in um, Montana at Glacier National Park. Uh, we went August and I had finished radiation um, end of June. 
And we went about six weeks after radiation was done, um, chemo, you know, all treatment was done. We went six weeks after and we hiked here. This trail was Highline Trail and the views are stunning. And so anyways, I, I like to visit one new place a year. And so, you know, that might seem a lot like Marina. I can't plan up big trip everywhere. You can do something though. You can go try a new restaurant in your town. You can go on a, on a walk in a new area. I don't know, but having goals, there's something about it that just makes you feel alive. And so that's what I want to harness, you know, this January for you to kind of get your wheels spinning on, on things that can help you cancer or not. Uh, Jenny first two cancer diagnosis was 20, First two was 2019, third in 2021. Today I booked a trip to Europe. Yeah, Jenny, just take the trip. Take it. Uh, life is not guaranteed whether we have cancer or not. And I want your goal if you're on your cancer journey to do your best to feel well. And I try to put out a lot of videos exactly on that topic because when I was diagnosed, I had to feel well to get through this you know, to start training for Boston. And then the second time I had cancer, I had just had my second child Capri. And so I had a two-year-old and a two-month-old and I felt a lump and talk about, you know, ill timing. <laughs> and it was the pandemic. So, you know, I had to start chemo again in the throes of early motherhood. And thank God for, again, a supportive husband and family. Um. I was able to get through that, but, uh, yeah. So anyways, we just, we just got to set these goals to, to feel alive. All right. Um, some comments again, Letitia says happy birthday. Thank you, Helen. Oh, I got my book published. My book. What? Marina, I got my book published. My book is done. Really? Helen? Um, that would be amazing. That, that is a goal of mine, Helen. And it, and it really, like, can you share your book on here? Um, I would love to write a book and I don't know, I don't know how much I have to say, but, um, <laughs> I have had a lot of stuff happen to me, but I, I had just have an idea of, of how it could kind of guide. So I think that's going to look like a condensed version that'll be available through my website and then beyond, beyond cancer. Um, yeah, I'm just so, I'm, I love it. You're inspiring me. Jackie, I published my first collection of poetry in October. I love hearing that. I plan to publish another collection this year. I feel it is something positive I can put out into the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Poetry, writing. If, you know, if no one bought it, it would be so, so wonderful for you. And if, you know, 10 people buy it, 100 people, 1,000 people buy it, imagine. It just trickles out into the world. So absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love that. Love it. Love it. Um, thank you for sharing. So there you go. Some goals from people here. So yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, that's what's going on. Um, that I'm still always working on stuff too. So that's what I want to encourage you this month. Um, any other questions, please feel free to comment. Uh, what else is new for me? So I mentioned I go, I went on a hike today huge, huge guys. If it's a very cold where you're at, like Jasmine and it's negative 32 in Alaska, what do you do? Can you tell me Jasmine? Um, cause I love movement and I love nature and I feel like both of those are very healing, whether you're on the cancer journey or not. Right. So movement being yoga walks, but especially walks out in nature. Um, and just, yeah, being outside, I just, I thrive on it. I think everybody benefits from it. So um, is that something you, you can incorporate in your new year? I did today. And I tell you, I felt so filled up. I am from Arizona. I was born and raised here. Southern Arizona is beautiful with a bunch of saguaro cactus and mountains. And where I'm at in the greater Phoenix area is similar, just a big city also, but we have mountains. And so you have to drive. We drove 30 minutes today with amazing views. I'll share them on my Instagram later. Oh, you know what? I'll post them here for you guys. You don't have to go. You don't have to go anywhere. You just stay right here on YouTube. Um, I will post some photos from my birthday hike today. 
I, again, I grew up here and I've hiked this thousands of times and I am still, it still takes my breath away. Like the mountains, the birds, the just stepping out of your every day and getting some of that. So I strongly encourage it. Can you get some nature in your year? Uh, Jackie and I, oh yes, sorry. We did that. And Helen, there you go with your purple to the sense of humor with purple. And I'm just, again, just thankful you're here. Lynn, so ha. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> um, so that's what I did today, the hike. Oh my gosh, it was great. Um, I'll share this news and I'll put more information on the channel. So this is exciting too. So another thing I'm doing new today is I'm testing out my speaker skills, which is funny because here I am hosting a live and a lot of you play this back. Um, but I, I've had an opportunity to be a presenter for the Hike Like a Woman Summit. And I was contacted by the organizer, Rebecca. She emailed me and said when she had breast cancer a couple years ago, I became her, quotes, YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube best friend. And I was so touched by that. And she said, I was watching one of your videos where after chemo, you went for a walk with your family outside. And it, she said it just stuck with her how important it was to, again, like move when you feel well and get outside. The two things I'm just talking about. And um, she loved that and inspired her. She is a hiker and, you know, I don't remember. I think she had this group before, but I mean, now this group is a lot of what she does, hike like a woman. And I just love it. So um, there it will be a summit. I can share the link that you can join virtually. And then you can hike, you know, on the days where you where you live on the days that we all be doing a hike. Um, and that's just really neat, really empowering for women. So um, another opportunity and um, something I've never done. I have to do like a 30 minute presentation and I'm just really excited really excited for it. So I'll be sharing information about that. If any of you guys want to check out the hike, like a summit, hike, hike, like, hike, like a woman summit. So there you go. Thank you. It's just new things coming, new things. Okay. Lynn, let's do so happy. <laughs> I love it. So ha meant so happy. So happy for you enjoying this milestone. Thank you. Yes. I'm telling you like a birthday never felt so good. Like just have cancer twice and then you'll be begging for the candles on your cake <laughs> or most of our, most of us run from it. Like, no, I'm not my age. Like, please bring it on. Um, oh, you're fine. Lynn. I love it. Uh, she said, you are indeed, you are, you indeed are incredibly inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, sharing the energy. Helen says, Marina, you are a rock star for all of us. I'm so blessed being here. Amen. I was just thinking of this kind of what I was saying, right? No, you know, not every day is guaranteed. Um, it just is like, I'm just, I, I'm just filled up. I see, I'm, I can't eat like, I'm so cheesy. Um, seriously turning 40 and um, being able to have two children after having cancer and then cancer again, I just, I can't think of a better life guys. I can't think of a better life. And so that's it. Just one day at a time, one day at a time. Um, all right. So some tips for you guys. What do I have? Does anybody have a specific question? I kind of hit all my points for the live today. I wanted to encourage you guys to have a goal, whether you're on your cancer journey or not. Um, again, small and, and write down those goals, like tell somebody first, you know, spend some time walking in nature so you can really brainstorm about something you want to do. Next, write it down, make it, you know, keep or write about it until it just feels like, yep, this is it. And then next, tell somebody about it. Like tell, that's what I did when I qualified for Boston. I told like the world, I was like, Hey, I'm running this marathon and I, I am going to qualify for Boston. I told my husband who I was dating at the time, like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this. And he showed up at the end of my race with a banana and a blanket because you're very cold when you're done running. <laughs> He's so funny. He's like, I Googled, what do you bring a runner? And, uh, and I did it. I did it. So just spend time in nature thinking about it, write it down and then make it happen. Tell somebody so that you keep yourself accountable and get yourself a pretty journal. Like I did last year, create the life 
you love. I saw this at the store and I'm, I'm not a sucker for overbuying journals, but I, I can be easily, trust me. Um, but I had to have this one. And ever since I started writing things in here, I feel like things started to happen. So it really, it, it helps you focus on what you may need to do. What you may need to do is be present with your family. What you may need to do is to finish reading like, you know, a book, right? The guys, when I'm talking goals, I'm talking like, just do the things that you want to do. Cause I need to be better at reading my books and finishing them. Um, all right, Karen, welcome back. Hi, Marina, taking a quick work break to say hi. What would we do without you? You're a true blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I feel the same when I get to see returning faces. Jasmine, I'm at work very far north. I work 12-hour days, seven days a week. What? And I live in a remote camp for two weeks. What? Then I have two weeks off. Oil and gas development. Oh, that makes sense. First, green field being developed. Wow. Wow. Green field. So maybe more earth friendly. That's great for everybody. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you for being here. I just love seeing like what you all are up to. Um, Helen says, I want to be healed from cancer. I want everyone to be healed from cancer, but especially you, Helen. Um, I am faithful and I will pray for you. Um, and Helen says, Marina, I thought you were 30, LOL. Thanks, girl. <laughs> and Jackie, congratulations on a hike like a woman. Thank you. This is, um, you know, new for me to, to do some stuff like this. And I'm so excited. Lisa says, continue. I am journaling and working on the surrendering process. Oh, I love that, Lisa. Thank you for sharing. I do feel like in life when I did, um, so Oprah has a saying for this and I love listening to Oprah super soul. If you guys didn't know, it's been a while since, um, she's had new stuff on there, but She's like, she was the best interviewer. Anyways, Oprah calls it the let go method, right? Of like manifesting. Like this is one way to manifest, right? Have it and think on it, write it, and then you're letting it go. And you're letting it go in a sense like this. Like when I met my husband, I swear, I was like, I really want to find somebody. I would really love that. I said it. I felt it. And I said, but if I don't, I will also be okay. And so there was something about having the energy and then releasing it and letting the universe, whatever you want to call it, do what it will with it. And then I was, I, I met my husband like then, like a week later, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it, and also, also, um, if I'm being honest, I was like, Oh, I, my gut, my gut said, wow, I really like this person. But my mind said, but I don't know if this is my type, whether it's a husband or a job or an opportunity. I said, I don't know, but don't let your mind always dictate everything. Let your gut and, you know, your instinct kind of allow things to happen as they should. And it turns out my husband would be the best person for me in this world. He is my soulmate. Yes. So there you go cheese who wanted some cheese with their <laughs> with their live today um yeah so that is what's going on as far as that stuff i mean i can't believe it's already the 22nd you guys this is crazy so here's what's coming up is um i did oh here was the other thing i want to talk about i did um a video i, I released a video this weekend was it yesterday? Yesterday. I don't know if you guys watched it. Um, so again, make sure you subscribe. Um, it was kind of a continuation. So I did, I do a vlog once a month and those seem to still be pretty popular. Like people are always like, what are your habits? What are you eating? And what are your thoughts? And I was recording that vlog a month ago and I missed putting part of my recording in my vlog and I had it in my, you know, bank of videos. So I played it for myself and I thought, oh man, this is, yeah, I have to share this. So that was the video I released yesterday. If you haven't watched it, please check it out. It's titled, um, a story of love and loss. And it's a true story from my cancer coach program. And it was just like me sharing the story, but my thoughts on it. 
I really want you to watch it because it's really very short. So it's very easy. It's about six minute video. And um, I share about having a physical release at this time. And then this story just created flood floodworks. Like I haven't sobbed like this in months. I did sob like this one other time last year with losing my friend to stage four breast cancer. And I actually didn't even sob when I lost her. I sobbed like two months after when I like saw a video of her, excuse me, a picture of her randomly. Um, so sometimes your body needs this release, especially on this journey. And I talk about that in the video because like we're so uh, busy doing all the things like the appointments and stuff to beat our cancer and being a survivor. You're like, okay, got to see an oncologist. So, like we're so busy just getting through sometimes and being strong that we're not like feeling the depths of what we've gone through or are going through. And I was forced to around this time, um, that, that day, that day, that whenever, when I recorded this video that I share and, um, and I just talk about that because it's so needed. So I'm going to strongly encourage that you see that video. Um, cause I think I hit some good topics there. And, uh, in this video also, hi, say hi to some people that are hopping on Lou. Hello from Atlanta. Good to see you, Lou. Um, and she says, happy birthday, happy 40th birthday. Thank you. Come, you welcome, welcome to the party, the rose gold balloon. My house is like decorated and there's like lights from a party we had yesterday. But thank you. Um, so the video, okay. Oh, here's someone commenting. Okay, thank you. Lisa says, it was amazing reading the vlog was heartbreaking. I, this is something about the story I shared and um, it came from Susan Silberstein. Silberstein is her last name with a B. Um, and it was from Dr. Lawrence LaShawn, who has a book. Let me see if it's here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here we go. Um, Cancer is a turning point. I mentioned it in the last live. There you go. Um, been reading some of that. But um, he is a psychotherapist. And he talks about his experience of working with people on their cancer journey. And really the gist of it is the ones that had – that tend to do best and heal and recover um, are people that have used their diagnosis to motivate them to doing something very meaningful in their life. So if you're doing meaningful work, whether it's your work or your hobby or something that it helps your overall being. And I mean, who, well, why that's very fulfilling. I think that it's, it's something to think about. You, you should check out this book. So he shares a story with Susan and she, and that's the story I talk about in the video. So if you need some perspective, check it out. Um, and I was reflecting on that video too in the video. I'm like, okay, well the book and the book says cancer is a turning point, right? Like you should use cancer to turn your life around. And then at one point in the video, I kind of say like you are where you you're meant to be, but I just want you guys to know, I, I do believe that. And it really, really sucks to hear that sometimes. Like, wait, I have cancer. Am I really where I'm meant to be? That's not the point. Because being alive in this life is not guaranteeing that bad things won't happen. That is literally the beauty of life. That because there's so much goodness and light that unfortunately it's better because there it's not always like that. So if you're at a point that you don't love being, you can find ways to step out and be thankful. I know it's hard, guys, but trust me, I've been there. I've been there with my bald chemo head, you know, listening to people complain about other things other than cancer, and it's okay. Um, because even when I had cancer, I felt this way. It was part of the let go, part of the release. Somebody said to me that year, I had cancer the first time. They said, you're probably so happy to get this year behind you. And I was like, Actually, it was a really good year. I just happened to have cancer because it was true. It was the year I dated and fell in love with my husband and found out what I was made of and found out what I could do. And even if my last day was going to be at some point on that journey, I felt like I lived an intentional life 
that I could be at peace with that. I've never wanted to go. I don't want to leave this, this world. I'm now mom to two kids and I have so much to do, but there's something about that. Let go, like just let go of the wanting the perfect life because it's no such thing. There's no such thing guys. So make use of what you have now. Oh, deep stuff. (laughs) All right. Uh, Marina, um, Karen says, Marina, I have three nurses sitting here watching you with me. Wow, Karen. Oh, wow. That's great. What do you do for work? I forget. Lisa, I want to continue crocheting Afghans for Project Cuddle and for friends. Oh my God. I love that. I don't crochet, Lisa. I love that you do. I tried my hand at knitting. I was not good at it, but I gave it like one shot. So I will do more eventually. But what I do do is I save my old towels and blankets and I have them in a bag to go donate to the dog shelter. And so things like that, or sometimes my old blankets, I've given them to the like homeless projects. Right. So I can't crochet, but I can donate. So I love what you're doing. Lynn, I love the perspective you give. So helpful. Well, good. Okay. So that's what needed to come out. Yeah. I put out that video and then I watched it back and I was like, do I contradict myself in this video? I'm saying, Hey, use cancer as a turning point to like find your, 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 your purpose or whatever that fulfills you. And then I'm like, Oh, but don't worry. You're at where you're supposed to be. Well, I believe both of those. I really believe that we are at where we're supposed to be. And that doesn't mean that our path might still be changing. Okay. So the point is let cancer push you to try a little harder to, to find what fills your cup. Okay. For me, it's this right now, this moment, being able to chat with you guys. And it's also being a mom to my two young kids and learning and growing with them and enjoying time with my husband, like going for a hike today. And it's turning another day, year, decade older. So it's, it's all of that. Lou, my last infusion, number 18, this Thursday. Oh, I still have some hair and refuse to shave it. LOL. Lou, I was just telling my husband this earlier. This is probably my, I'm going to safe space. Honesty. It's probably my least favorite phrase from that. I've been hearing all the time is that you do you, but I'm going to use it. You do you Lou. Lou, you don't have to shave your hair. You don't have to wear wigs. But if you want to do any of it, then you should do it, right? Do what is best for you on your journey because it's yours. And I'm here to give you inspiration. You're here to like say, I'm going to try this or that, but this works for me. Karen, I'm a unit clerk on a surgery floor. We have several surgeons that deal with breast cancer and reconstructive reconstruction exclusively. Wow. Right. Oh, thank God for what they do. Their experience helps others. And I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for all the healthcare workers. Little old me, a dental hygienist over here. I like to think I'm making a difference one tooth at a time. Um, (laughs) Karen says, but hearing from a two time thriver is a different perspective. Oh, well, thank you. I was going to say, Lisa, bravo, Karen, you're making a difference in the lives of others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody's hand is a part of this big picture. Um, Yeah. So seriously, I love it, guys. Thank you. Oh, look at that. You're getting. Oh, Karen says, thank you, Lisa. I never thought I'd be the patient. Isn't, of course. No, like, yeah, I think of that too. I'm like, gosh, these oncology nurses and these surgeons that have to, that have to, that help others. And I'm like, what that must be like to go home and be like, oh man, like so many people to see. That must be so interesting. I'm just so thankful. So thankful for everybody that helps. Um, yeah. Oh, Lou. Okay. Lou, Lou, that is refusing to shave her head because you do you boo. Um, says thanks. LOL. Right. I love my beanies. I absolutely wore head wraps to chemo. It gets so cold at the cancer center and I love hats. Love them. So I'm going to finish um, by putting on my birthday hat here and remind you guys to subscribe so you can look for February's schedule soon. Um, oh, Helen, just pour the honesty though. Helen, go ahead. She says, cancer changed my life with cancer in a way I do not like it, Marina. I 
I don't, I don't like it for you either. I get it. I get it, Helen. And it's, I get it and I don't, right? Because I did not have stage four, but I could say cancer sucks and life is beautiful and do your best. Lou, my nurses are amazing. I bring them cookies from time to time. Good, Lou. Oh, gluten-free, organic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Um, Lisa, to pay it forward with cards for cancer patients is a little encouragement that will help make them happy. I love it. I'm going to show you guys something. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you one thing really quick. If you can hang with me, let me show you. All right. I did a taboo thing. I stepped away. I love hats. I love hats. This is my new birthday hat a friend got for me. Whoop. There we go. Maybe you guys can see it that bright light. But there it is. There's my age. And um, I'm so happy you guys joined me for my birthday live. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being here. I will see you guys very, very soon. Very soon. Love you. Bye.